we delve into the remarkable stories of five men who came agonizingly close to conquering the world, from legendary conquerors to ambitious leaders. Each of these individuals left a lasting impact on history with their grand visions and near-successful endeavors. Join us as we explore the fascinating tales of these almost world conquerors and uncover the reasons behind their ultimate downfall. Stay tuned to learn more about the captivating journeys of these ambitious figures who dared to dream of world domination. If conquering the world sounds too ambitious, almost like a science fiction movie, Think of the classic villain who wants to take control of everything and everyone. But you will be surprised to know that, throughout history, there have been people who have come very close to achieving it. The history of humanity is sculpted by the outcomes of thousands of epic wars, where the fate of entire civilizations has been decided by the swords of soldiers and the orders of their leaders. But to what extent does it become a conflict of interest? Or the idea of total domination of a planet? Without further ado, sit back and get ready to meet five men who almost conquered the world. Alexander the Great, also known as Alexander the Great, was the leader of the Macedonian Empire and one of the greatest military strategists in history, who created one of the largest empires of the ancient world, spanning from present-day Greece to India, including Egypt. His reign, characterized by a brilliant and violent politico-military strategy, began with the control of rebellions in Greek cities and subsequently in the conquest of the Persian Empire, his main historical enemy, and ultimately the greatest expansion of his empire. But his plan was more ambitious than just conquering many territories. Alexander the Great sought to consolidate the union of conquered territories through marital alliances between Greeks and Persians. The objective was to unify both cultures under one language, currency, and commerce, which would prevent the conquered countries from retaliating against their conquerors and, over time, becoming one. This, possibly in a few years, would have given him the military power to control much of the world's landmass. However, to this day, the exact cause out of his death at the age of 32 is unknown. Some say he was poisoned and others that he contracted Nile fever or malaria. The reason for the fall of the Macedonian Empire was that Alexander the Great did not name an heir, leading to a succession war among his generals that ended up disintegrating the great Macedonian Empire to which he had dedicated his life. Hitler is one of the personalities of the modern era, who came very close to becoming a real threat to the entire world. And if he had not been stopped in time this video might be in German. The most important background of Hitler begins when he participated as a speaker and propagandist on political issues. He had to go through many failed election campaigns, make multiple enemies, and even be imprisoned. But finally, after several years, the resentment that Germany felt for losing World War I, and the economic and social consequences that this defeat brought, led to the acceptance of his discriminatory and racial ideas. The rest is history. Germany invaded much of Europe through a new military tactic called Blitzkrieg, Lightning War. Blitzkrieg involved the use of large concentrations of aircraft, tanks, and artillery. These forces broke through enemy defenses, air power prevented the enemy from closing the gap, and subsequently, German forces encircled enemy troops and forced them to surrender. Much of Europe fell under the direct or indirect control of German forces, and although some countries allied with the Reich, many others were occupied or conquered during the early phases of the conflict. But Hitler had his Achilles heels, his rash decisions and overambition finally led the Germans to be besieged by three great armies. The Soviet, the American, and the British. This quickly led to a catastrophic collapse and disintegration of the main German leaders and finally, on May 8, 1945, total defeat occurred when Berlin was taken. I will leave you a video in the description where we talk more deeply and with much information about the question of what would have happened if Germany had won World War II. Napoleon Bonaparte was a military man. Emperor of France, King of Italy, and conqueror of much of Western Europe in the early 19th century, and is considered by many the most brilliant military strategist in all history. In fact it is well known that many of his tactics are used and studied in military schools today. During his military career, Napoleon Bonaparte demonstrated great determination and coldness in difficult moments, which soon led him to be appointed Brigadier General, a position that gave him many benefits and would later open his ascent to power. Napoleon's greatest military victories occurred before taking power, successfully invading northern Italy, gaining territories from the Austrian Empire in the region of the Netherlands, and later Napoleon attempted to weaken English power with military campaigns in Egypt. In 1804 he proclaimed himself monarch of the First French Empire and began a series of military campaigns that would culminate in the conquest of large territories in Europe and Africa. By that time Napoleon ruled over 70 million people, from 1812 a series of defeats began that would lead to the collapse of the French Empire, mainly with the failed campaign in Russia. In 1813 Napoleon was defeated at the Battle of Leipzig, and was forced to abdicate the throne and isolate himself on the island of Elba, 
but the final collapse came at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, where the Napoleonic army faced English troops who finished them off. This battle marked the end of the Napoleonic era. Cyrus II, also known as Cyrus the Great, is a historical figure not much talked about but who is definitely one of the greatest conquerors of all history. Being of royal descent, upon the death of his father Cambyses I, Cyrus took power and became king. Cyrus ruled the Achaemenid dynasty and expanded his kingdom into a powerful empire. He triumphed not only through conquest but also by showing tolerance and mercy to those he defeated. Additionally, Cyrus is known for being a great military strategist and political leader who won the hearts, even of the peoples he conquered by force. His first great feat was defeating the powerful Medes Empire, which was ruled by Astyagus, and subsequently successfully invaded Lydia and Babylon, thus consolidating the Achaemenid Persian Empire. His total territory stretched from the Mediterranean Sea to the mountain ranges between Afghanistan and Pakistan, thus founding one of the largest empires in all history. The Persian Empire of Cyrus II was one of the most prosperous in all history, lasting approximately 200 years. However, they did not count on the fact that in 332 BC, Alexander the Great would begin a campaign to conquer it, thus ending one of the greatest empires the world had ever seen. Ultimately, and without fear of doubt, the person who came closest to conquering the world was Genghis Khan, the founder of the largest contiguous empire in the world, the Mongol Empire which was four times larger than all the territories conquered by Alexander the Great. The story of Genghis Khan's rise to power is very interesting. A boy who lost his father and was expelled from his tribe and left to his fate in a region with brutal climates. Later, he resumed the leadership that belonged to him to unify hundreds of nomadic tribes into a single army to conquer much of Asia, the Middle East, and Europe. If you are interested in knowing this story in detail, I recommend the movie Mongol which is a biographical depiction of Genghis Khan's rise to power. The brutal Mongol Empire came to encompass territory from the Korean Peninsula to the Danube River in Eastern Europe, hosting a population of more than 100 million inhabitants, and including some regions as rich and important as China, Mesopotamia, Eastern Europe, part of India, Russia, among others. It is worth noting that the Mongols are the only empire that has managed to defeat the Russians. Not even leaders like Alexander the Great, Hitler, or Napoleon Bonaparte were able to defeat them. Genghis Khan is known as a charismatic leader and an excellent military strategist. It is said that Genghis Khan's recipe for success was the selection of men for positions of responsibility based on their personal qualities and not their belonging to the Mongolian aristocracy. Even his own enemies once defeated were selected to join in tasks where they were exceptionally great. This generated two things, great results in battle and unconditional loyalty from all his generals and soldiers. That's all. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this video, don't forget to subscribe and activate that powerful notification bell.